there's only one word that's really been spoken. It's called fresh. See, sons and daughters, it's going to be fresh. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be fresh. So what does fresh mean to you? What is the definition when someone says it's going to be fresh? What does that mean? How do I prepare myself as the bride of Christ when Papa says to me in 2013 it's going to be fresh? Apostle said something tonight about it's time to let go of the former things. It's time to break formulism. Formality has to go. See, if it's going to be fresh, then everything that was has to go. That means the way we do things is going to have to change. My mindset is going to have to be renewed. Methodology is going to have to be broken off. Religion is going to have to be annihilated. If God said in 2013 it's going to be fresh, then, in, as, then as the bride and as the body of Christ, what must I do? It's time to clean the shelf off. It's time to get the shelf cleaned off in our life. We got, uh, we got this, you know, it says in uh, the word in 2 Corinthians, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And, and so if we have this treasure in earthen vessels, if I got all this clutter in my life, if the shelf of my life is cluttered with everything, you can't see that treasure. So we got a lot of clutter in our life. And we're dragging year and year in and year out things of yesterday. We've entered into 2013, and what do we do? We start church the same way. And so what happens is our receptivity of what the Holy Spirit wants to do is not there. So we're going to have to change everything about ourselves. And have a different level of receptivity of what God's about to do. If 2013 is going to be fresh, then really that's awesome. You, you, you sung the song that God is able. My next question is, we know he's able. Are you willing? Are you willing to let go? Are we willing to release, relinquish, relent? things that we've held on to grudges anger resentment bitterness formality formulism religion are we willing to become naked before god say here we are god i really don't know what fresh means god but i want it i i can't put my hand on it lord but i want this freshness i, I want a fresh move and it's coming son it's coming. You've been plowing and plowing and plowing and plowing. He said, it's harvest time. It's harvest time, son. You're about to reap that which you have sown. It's been many years of hard plowing. But because of your faithfulness to what he has entrusted you, God said, son, I, tonight I have remembered you. And son, it will be fresh. The yokes of man will be broken off of you. There's been deception spoken into you by things of the past that people spoke over you. But tonight the Lord would say, Son, tonight it's fresh. I broke all those things off of you. Your mind will be quiet in the night hours, I promise you. And in the midst of the night, that word like a fire will start ignite something fresh inside of you. It's now. Tell me he's a God of right now. God's doing it right now. See, he's doing it right now. This is a now moment for the church of Jesus Christ. We're not going to do church anymore. We're going to be the church. We've been too busy trying to do everything. Because it's time to be the church. It's going to be fresh. 
so fresh, daughter. It's going to be so fresh. You're, you're going to know that you know that you know. It's like the spring rain. When that spring rain comes, you're going to know that this winter season that you have been in is over. You can feel the lifting of all the weight that's been on you. It's like there's been a heaviness upon you. But the Lord would say tonight, the spring rains are about to come upon you. And when the rain of my glory comes upon you, there's been some physical ailments in the midst of you. Right now they're through. God said, I just healed you through and through. Your mind's going to become clear, I promise you. This is the year of restoration that you've been waiting and praying for. I'm going to bring restoration to all those involved with you. It's now, daughter, the home's going to come into alignment. The Holy Ghost is about to visit you in an extraordinary way to bring syncopation to the things that God's been speaking to you. The last two years has been nothing but battle, battle, battle. But now the battles are through. Now it's the year of victory that God has promised you. This is the year of third year seed time and harvest for you. This is the year of victory for you. Your mind's going to be clear. Your spirit's going to be clear. The Lord's about to speak a new word in the midst of you. Hallelujah. Right now it's fresh. It's going to be so fresh what God's about to do. So how do I, as, as the bride of Christ, how do I step into this freshness of the Lord? That, how would I do that? It's do something you've never done before. Break the pattern of life that you've gotten into. Even the way you come to church. Even the way you, you go to the throne room. Start seeking the Holy Spirit. What must I do? I want something fresh. I want something new. I've had everything before, but it's not doing it any longer. See, that's formulism. That's formality. We got a certain formality that we require the church to do. But if you break that formality or break that thing that... We do and do something different. It does rock the boat. Well, we don't do it that way. Well, that church don't exist. This is fresh. This is something extraordinary. And I don't even know what it looks like, but I want to be a part of it. And I'm not going to allow myself to be blind to it by looking at what used to be. I got to be willing as the bride of Christ, as a man of God, I got to be willing. Say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Is this your family? Well, for I just thank you for this family right now, Papa. Beloved daughter, it's going to be fresh. The way you even receive things, the way you move even through your house, you can see like a whole thing of grace coming on you. This measure of grace being poured out on you. The spirit of grace and mercy and passion poured out on you. It's like the Lord is going to so renew you. There's going to be a dance back in your dance, and it will be a dance of romance. The joy that has eluded you will come back to you. The joy unspeakable, pressed down, running over. You're going to laugh again. You're going to dance again. You're going to believe again. You're going to hope again. That opposition's broken off of you. Woman of God, you're not going to miss the plan. That's God's promise to you. You've been a faithful daughter faithful daughter and as a father I bless my little girl how you long for your father's blessing my little girl my little sweetheart I'm not disappointed in you you haven't failed the test you've been crowned by the best you're not going to be selling for less you're my girl I have remembered you no more sorrow that's over it's right now it's right now son it's been heavy son Lord, I don't know how much more I can carry this I don't know how much more I can sustain dad I need you I'm desperate for Jesus I'm desperate for your touch and as a father I need the father's touch and as a dad I love my son Mm. It's fresh. You're good, Daddy. I'm proud of you, my son. 
I'm proud of you. And the Lord blessed her seed. Blessed her seed. I bless you guys. Yeah, you're awesome, son. You're made just in your father's likeness. You're an image of who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Change your receptivity tonight. We're going to talk about receptivity. See, we, we hear a lot of things. With this, we acknowledge them. But have we really received that which the Lord wants to do? And, and if I receive that which the Lord wants to do, how many know that's going to bring change? It's time, for, it's time for change in the church. I don't know about you. I'm sick of the way the things have been. And what's frustrating for me is I hear people say they want change. But then you watch them and nothing changes. They've got into formulism. They've got into formality. They've gotten stuck in a rut. But the Lord said tonight, it's time to move forward not waiting for somebody else to do it the changes I want to see in this world around me it's got to start here the changes I want to see in my home start here we got to receive this tonight we got to receive what the Lord is seeing is saying unto us amen there's a lot of people who come and a lot of people go but they never receive what the Lord had for them. Even with formality, though, that's just apostle so-and-so. For see, by your very words, it's only apostle so-and-so. And then we wonder why nothing happens in the house of the Lord. We wonder why there's no blessings bestowed upon us because our receptivity was less than God's presentation of the gift that stood before you. And according to that level that you receive the presentation of God's gift that is given to you, if you receive God's gift that's presented to you lesser than what God has presented it, then according to where you receive it is according to the gift that you're going to receive. Amen? See, Oh, that's just Joseph's son. Do you hear me now? That's just Joseph's son. Does that mean that because they said just as Joseph's son, that it took away from the anointing, the power, the authority? Absolutely not. It was the receptivity. You can have the greatest anointed person in the world come in this house. But it depends on how you receive the gift that God has put before you. And to the level the way you receive that gift is to the level of the authority anointing that's going to be released in the house. And to that level, the gift will be received. Receptivity. We've got to change it. In the past, we've got to go higher. See, he's saying it. But you're not really receiving it and activating it and moving with it. Because if you were, you would not worry about your neighbor to the left nor the right. You become undignified so he could get glorified. Amen. So you, you got to get to that place. You're going to do it, son. You're going to do it. I'm here to tell you tonight, son, you're going to do it. No, you're not like anybody else. You're not created like anybody else. You're you. You don't have to try to live out somebody else's identity. Or that which someone wants you to live out. God said you be you. Love to be you. Discover who you are in him, by him, and through him. For they get the calling in you, by him, through you. You're an awesome young man. And I, I, I praise the Lord for you. You're another young man that needs that father's love. You need your father's acceptance. And as a dad, I love you, son. And I apologize as a father for never always being there when you needed an ear or when you needed that validity legitimacy when you needed it I wasn't there there's always been a void in your life but tonight son 
that void is gone right now you can fill up your life now with nothing but glory you're successful you're talented you're gifted there's nothing you can't do I break that mindset off of you that tries to hinder you there's nothing son you're made in my likeness you're made in my image I created you and tonight the fire of God is gonna break every yoke off of you you're free tonight son you're free to be everything God called you to be nothing's going to stop you no mountain can hinder you you're going to be a leader son the day of being a follower is over for you hallelujah 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 receptivity see you gotta, you gotta lift your vision higher your expectations have to be higher See, we're not even touched the hem of his prayer shawl yet in this room. See, God wants to go this a little higher tonight. So we're going to have to break off the way we did things, the way we think in this house. And not worry about anybody else. Like blind Bartimaeus. He knew Jesus was there. And what did he do? He took up his robe. That identified him as a professional beggar. See, he made no room for going back. Jesus was there. And he was not going to let Jesus pass by. The crowds were telling him to shut up, be quiet. And he screamed all the louder. See, don't let him pass you by, church. Too many times he has visited you and has gone on by you because you have not had the receptivity to receive the anointing that's flowing amongst you see jesus is in this house and he's in here hebrews 13 he is the same yesterday today and forever amen he never changes jesus is in the house see we got to get like the book of acts see they were all together together but read on the most important part you all miss they were where in one place see tonight we got to make a decision everyone in this room we have to decide tonight and then come into agreement when we decided this is the place tonight this is the place where Jesus is about to touch down we got to agree this is that was talking about a prophet Joel this is that was spoken with the former and the latter rains are coming this is that tonight is the night this is the place you got to make the sin. Tonight is the night, and this is that. Tonight, this is the place. Jesus is going to do something in this place, and we got to decide tonight, this is it. And we're going to come in agreement, and when we do, something's going to happen. Something we've never seen before. It's going to break off all that junk in our trunk and get our trunk cleaned out. But we got to decide tonight, this is that. We got to say tonight, young lady, this is the place. You're here by divine appointment, not because you're family. You're here because God purposed you to be here. He's about to speak deeper in the midst of you. He's about to stir up that gift of creativity inside of you like never before. Daughter, you're about to get freer than you've ever been. So many expectations of man been put on you. There's all kind of pressure put down on top of you. But the Lord said tonight, I'm going to hide you in me. There will be no more pressure of man put on you. There will be no more man's expectation trying to drive you. He said, I'm the shield about you. I am your confidence. I am the peace that's within you. I'm the one that ordained you. I'm the one that called you. I'm the one that healed you. I'm the one that delivered you. I'm the one that birthed you. I'm the one that anointed you. I'm the one that's imparting fire on you tonight to break off these jokes. No more. They're done. It's, you're free, girl. You're going to be free to speak up, to speak out, step out, step in. Nothing's going to hinder you. Nothing. Every yoke broken off of you. All spirits of shame broken off of you. All spirits of insecurity broken off of you. And the fire of God says that I'm delivering you. I am healing you. I'm restoring you. I redeemed you. I sanctified you. I appointed you. And tonight I'm releasing you. By the blood of Jesus. You're free. You're free. 
You're free, young lady. You are free tonight. You are free. You have your own identity. You're free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's free. You're free tonight. You're free to be what God called you to be. Not sit there trying to be something that you're not. But it's going to be fresh. It's going to be fresh. It's not going to be like it has ever been before. Solid rock is about to get rocked. Amen. And there'd be no more clock at Solid Rock. God's got his own timetable. It's going to be fresh. Are we ready for it? Are you ready? It's your time. This is your time. You said, Lord, what is the destiny for me? And what is the timing on it? He says, it's now. Even in night hour, I'm about to speak in the midst of you. I put my robe of glory upon you. I robe you in the spirit of righteousness for my honor. You will be a spokesman for me. The fear of man is going to be broken off of you. And the power of my Jehovah like a river is going to flow out of you. There's even a song inside of you. And God says it's time to sing the new song. It's a song of praise, a song of glory, a song of deliverance that I took you through. Oh, daughter Zion, the Lord would say tonight, those gifts and talent have been so dormant inside of you. Tonight they're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out. You, you, got, you got to let it out. You got to let it out tonight. You just got to let it out. Get that shout out. No more rejection. No more fear of being rejected. You're, you're, you've got your daddy's little girl. And I bless you tonight with that Father's blessing. I'm proud of you as a girl. My little princess, I'm proud of you. You're a good daughter. There's nothing you can't do. Nothing can stop you. I have healed you. And then I spoke life in your physical being. Physical being, then I new life into it. You're not going to be so tired anymore. There's been a lot of tiredness on you. That's the weight of the world being broken off. People putting expectations and demands that God never required of you. It's all through. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 10, 40. I'm so glad tonight that we're doing something new. We're doing something fresh. We're not going to sit here and worry about the clock. We're not going to be conscious of what we're going to do the rest of the night. We're not going to be conscious of what I might have to do tomorrow. But see, tonight, let's get lost in Jesus. Let's break off some mindsets and get free in Jesus. If it's going to be fresh, let's make it fresh. Amen? Hallelujah. It's going to be fresh. Matthew 10, 40. He who receives you receives me. Amen. He who receives you receives me. Amen. See, we come on behalf of Jesus. So if you don't receive me, you're not going to receive the one who sent me. How many times have people come? We didn't like the way they dressed. We didn't like the way they act. We didn't like the way they moved. So what do we do? We turn off our receptivity. We reject the very gift that God's trying to give us, but because the gift didn't come the package that we expected, we reject it. And then we leave the meeting and say, I don't know what happened, but I know I didn't get nothing. But you didn't receive it. Because it wasn't dressed the way you wanted it. It didn't act the way you wanted to act. And they didn't present themselves with a title. Well, we got to see. Now we're starting to touch something here, you know what I mean? Well, that's just brother so-and-so. You know what I'm talking about? 
Well, I, I, I know that dude. I, I've been down the block with him. We were cool together. Mm -hmm. But so then what happens if we don't receive? Well, I've been in this church five years now. I already know what the apostle's up to. I already know the message. I already got the program down. I could sit there like a clown and be out of town, be in the seat at the same time. And then the leader said, well, that message didn't do nothing for me. You weren't even there. Your lights were on, but nobody was home. Because you got familiar. See, when you get familiar with someone, then all of a sudden, because you know them, and they're not always under the anointing, see, you got to start separating the man from the anointing. See, they say we, we get into trouble right there. We expect these prophets and apostles and evangelists and all of them to be way up here all the time. Then one day you run into the marketplace and they're just like you. And oh, oh. But you ain't sad not now. You ain't going to judge. You're going to leave it alone. But next time you see them preach, hmm, I know about you. I saw you in the marketplace. Receptivity just went out the window. But that power and authority is still in the vessel. They're God's ordained vessel. They're just like you and me. We mess up. But what happens, we don't receive the gift that God's presented us according to the level which God gave us. We receive it less than what God purposed. And then we wonder why the church doesn't change. We wonder why we don't change. Amen? Some say we're going to have to change. We, we need something really fresh. I hear a lot of people complain about their churches. And, then, you know, my, and I laugh at them when they start complaining. I said, I hear you complaining, but yet I see you tithing every Sunday. How many of you go to McDonald's, get a bad meal, and pay it at Burger King? See, we do the same thing. We complain about something, but yet we contribute to that. Guys, let's do something fresh. Let's do something fresh tonight. Don't let this just be another meeting. Lift your vision higher and your expectancy higher. No matter what the vessel looks like or how the vessel dress or how the vessel acts, no matter what the title is, but receive the person according to the gift of God's presentation of the gift. Amen? And according to that level, that's what you receive. Jesus, when you receive me, hallelujah, he receives you, receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. See, you, when we don't receive the gift, then we reject him and we reject the one who sent him. Then there's no receptivity. So there's, there's, there's no residual there. Hallelujah. He receives a prophet, and the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Amen? But see, first off, we've got we to receive the prophet in the prophet's name. But if you see them, receive them less than, see, when a ministry gift is received at the level of God's presentation, then the full measure of reward is received if a ministry receives a level lower than God's presentation, however, the reward is based on the level of receptivity, not on the level of the ministry gift. Amen? So if a prophet received in the name of a righteous man, then the reward will be of a what? Righteous man reward. So if you don't receive them, it doesn't mean that their gift ain't operation. It doesn't mean the anointing's not there. That anointing is still there. That gift is there. But we're not receiving it. We have decided not to receive it. But it doesn't mean it's not there. Hallelujah. So we've got to change 
our receptivity. 2003, let's really get ready for something fresh. Let's get a whole new perspective and start receiving the gifts that God is sending into the house. So God's about to send some gifts into the house. And so they may come a little different than you, okay? And it's okay. We can't get started getting competitive and start getting jealous, envious. See, I also got a sermon called, What Qualifies You to Do What You Do? So before we judge a vessel, you need to know their heavenly resume. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what qualifies them to do what they do. So before you judge the gift that God has presented to you, you need to know their heavenly resume. What qualifies them to do what they do? We need to understand that. But see, we, we, we don't even wait to hear what that vessel's been through to qualify to do what they do. I know Colossians 1.12 says you're pre-qualified to qualify. Read Colossians 1.12. You're pre-qualified to qualify. And then God qualifies you for the call. See, what happens on the way to the call in the qualification process and you quit. Because you, you don't like the way he is processing you or preparing you for the gift that's inside of you, for the anointing he's purposed for you as he tries to purify you, as he's preparing you for the gift and calling that he has for you, you reject the qualifications that he's qualifying you with. See, I'm all over the place tonight. But see, this is a smorgasbord night. See, God, God wants you to get something tonight. And, and we, we got to get a hold of that. We want something fresh that our perspective things have got to change. See, something's got to change, church. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, that's a $5 bill, right? How many of us different perspective on this $5 bill? Everybody sees this $5 bill different. Did you know that? Just think this $5 bill to that person out there on the street takes away their hunger pain. This $5 bill to a five-year-old child is a million dollars. The same $5 bill to somebody in debt over their head, it means nothing. It has no value. It has no value. See, it's all in perspective. Just like the man who gets saved in Turkey, he's got to die for salvation. To the drug addict and a prostitute, it's life. But the person who spent the whole life in church and has no value. Amen? Our perspective's got to change. We've got to start changing our perspective on things. And we know that God said he's going to do something fresh. Then he's going to what? Qualify you. What qualifies you to do what you do? Then you start telling people about your heavenly resume and what you have been through and what you have experienced. Amen, son? That's all part of your heavenly resume. All those things that you've been through, those battles, those wars, that rejection, that abuse that you've been through. He said, son, the devil would like to kill you. If he could have killed you, he would have killed you, but he couldn't touch you. God said, son, I'm qualifying you for the call I'm calling you to. I'm pre-qualifying you for the call, son. My hand is on you. I have anointed you. I appointed you. The world's trying to stop you. I educated you. I've given you the tongue of the learned, son. He said, I'm raised you up for such a time as this. There are many orphans around you. He said, son, I'm going to put the spirit of adoption upon you for the orphans that are around you to help the orphans get their spirit of adoption through the revelation and the teaching and the impartation that's coming upon you. It's now, son. This church is going to be totally different for you. Your perspective is going to be totally different because you, just like Paul, about to have a Holy Ghost encounter. God's about to wreck your world. God's about to encounter with you. God's about to release you. God's about to mend you. He said your dreams are going to become a reality. Your dreams have eluded you, but God said tonight that's about to change for you. It's going to be awesome, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
And he receives a righteous man. The name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. Amen. And whoever gives one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, I shall they say to you, he shall have no means lose his reward. According to what you measure out. Amen. But see, we've got to get a hold of this, church. This has got to become more than words. This has got to become life to each and every one of us in this room. That we're hearing what the Spirit is saying, but see, a lot of times we hear things. So I, I'm, my prayer is tonight that your receptivity is going to change. That you're ready to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do. That means i got to let go of my formulas and my formality. i got to let go of the way we've done things. We've become so indoctrinated on the way of doing things that we even know that we're religious, but we're doing it. But see, it's all going to be broken off in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight. Your mindsets are going to be broken and changed by the blood of the Lamb. Your expectancy and receptivity is going to come to a whole new level. That when you come into the house of the Lord, it's not just apostle so-and-so, but you're going to change your perspective and your viewpoint of the gift and the calling that stands before you in the house of the Lord. And something's going to happen. Why? Because now you're expecting. God said something fresh, something new. So get ready for that something fresh. Like fresh bread and breakery. Get ready for something extraordinary. Even the way when you come into church. Get ready. Align yourself with what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Lift your vision higher. Lift that expectation higher. Put it to demand on the anointing. you got to put a demand on it. It's a whole new season. It's all fresh. It's like the former and latter rain. It's fresh. He said, precious one of the Lord. You've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. You're a whole new creation in Him, by Him, through Him. You don't have a yesterday. You don't have a tomorrow. You have a right now. And it's right now that God is touching you. God is mending you. God's redeemed you. God shed His blood for you. God is cleansing you. God is breaking off yokes of man, the lies of man, deceptions of man, the betrayal of man. God said, tonight you are free. Your mind's going to be free. Your spirit's going to come to life. Spirit woman, I call you to attention. It's now, oh spirit woman, you're going to rise to declare the works of the Lord. And you, the pastor's going to need to talk with you because there's gift inside of you that he needs to pull out of you. There's a prophetic battle inside of you that's been lying dormant. He says, you do hear. You do perceive. You do not understand. But fear has stopped you. But fear has broken off of you to release that anointing that's inside of you to start flowing like a river. The prophetic battle has been hiding inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. See, this present moment is preparing you for the future of tomorrow. See, this present moment will transcend your past to move from the now into the present moving what God's about to do. Without the limitations, self-imposed limitations. Without all the mistakes in it. God said, you got to get a hold of this. Not just hear it, but get a revelation that it's going to be new. It's going to be new, daughter. It's going to be all new for you. It's going to be fresh. Papa has remembered you. Your prayers have not been in vain. He has seen the weeping in the night. He says, tell my bride, my little daughter, I have remembered you. I am answering you. Believe me. I've already put a move on things for you. Things are about to change around you. And the response to the prayer that you've been praying through. I'm about to bring that mountain down that's been opposing you. And when it's all through, oh my daughter, I promise you, you will see the dreams and reality, the things I've spoken come to pass concerning you. Your house is coming into order because God's a daughter. I'm stepping it up for you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's right now. See, we, we got to get a hold of it right now. We can leave her and say that was just another good service. If that's all it is, then, then our receptivity was not there. Then we really missed what the Holy Spirit was doing. I mean, it's not about getting the goosebumps, the jumping up and down, snot flying, tears flying, chairs flying. It ain't all about that. It's about God getting down, down inside of you and stirring something up 
awaken you to destiny awaken the bride it's time to awaken the bride you need to wake up it's now you need to wake up right now it's time to wake up and shake off those bands shake off those heavy hands it's time to lift up your voice and give god a shout amen it's time to praise him god is doing something so you acknowledge it by praising him you acknowledge that god has done something by praising him it's an acknowledgement that it's already finished that it's already done that it's already happened it's already moving it's already activated and you're giving him praise for it because you've been healed you've been delivered you've been restored you've been redeemed you've been sanctified you're a new creation in him by him you gotta acknowledge it you gotta get up to praising him amen that judges that that's your receptivity receiving it how to receive it getting on with it get on with it it's happening it's happening right now all of you are standing you got it it's yours you got it you step right into it you move right into it right now it's happening right now it's i'm telling you, that yoke's been broken that mentality's been broken that slave mentality's been broken that property spirit's been broken that oppression's been broken it's broken by the blood oh it's all broken tonight by the blood it's happening right now it's happening right now in this house that financial miracle is happening right now the financial blessing is happening right now that family member that's lost is being healed right now right now your family's being restored your family's being healed right now god's in the house you got to receive it you got to receive it I can preach it to you all night long but if you're not receiving it when they were all together together they've got in one place this is it this is it tonight it's happening the revival starts tonight in my heart the re world revival starts tonight in my heart the revival that transcends any revival but it starts tonight with my receptivity to receive that which spoke about a prophet Joel. This is that, the former and latter rains. There's an outpouring. And it's happening right now. It's happening right now. And we're not going to ascend to it emotionally, but spiritually we're going to acknowledge it. But spiritually we're going to accept it. That it's something fresh did happen. I can't tell you what happened, but I know something happened. I am not the same. I don't perceive things the same. And I'm not judging anymore. But it's right now. It's right now in this house. It's right now, daughter. The heavens are open above you. You're in the king's court. And the king has met with you. Your deliverer, Jehovah, is enough for you. He's changing times and seasons for you right now. He's syncopating you with the plan that he's spoken over you. It's like Holy Ghost alignment to all that's been released in the midst of you right now. It's happening right now. You are the healed of the Lord. You are the redeemed of the Lord. And there's a fresh fire, fresh anointing. It's breaking off the yokes of man. It's breaking off the time barriers, limitations, all coming off. You're going to be like a wild woman. I'll tell you, you're going to be a wild woman. You better start wearing sneaks to church. You're gonna have your you're gonna have your Holy Ghost dance on. Amen. It's right now. How I many is a God of right now? See, he's doing it right now. But you gotta get it determined tonight. You're gonna start having your receptivity a whole lot higher. And stop taking things for granted. We can even take our church for granted. And we come in church and we go out of church. We go in church and come out. Of, but our receptivity is not there anymore. And we don't even know we've been wooed to sleep. There's an anointing in the house breaking yokes. We don't even know it. Because we do this every Sunday. We do this every Wednesday. See what happened? That kind of thinking hinders the Holy Spirit. That stinking thinking. We need to check up from the neck up. Get rid of stinking thinking. Amen. Really. We got to break it off. We got to have an expectancy really higher in this church. We got to lift our expectation higher in this church. And our receptivity's got to go higher. 
and be aware of it. Be aware that we have fallen into that trap. We fall into a trap. We don't even know we were in it. We don't even know that our receptivity is not even there. This is what we do. So we just sit there. That's what we're called to do. We know when to dance. We know to jump up and down. You know, we got it all down. We go, we go with the program. But the problem, son, we don't change. Because we got into a program. We really haven't received all that the Holy Spirit has. It's not the Holy Spirit didn't pour it out. It's pouring out. But our spout was not on. Man of God, you're here by divine appointment. God is so proud of you, son. You are an awesome man of God. These are the best days ahead of you. There's a new strength coming in the midst of you. The healing you need tonight is happening right now. Your physical healing right now. Your blood pressure, everything is coming right into order right now. There'll be no more stress on you. There's been a lot of stress put on you, but tonight it's broken off of you. The power of the Holy Spirit is touching you, healing you, delivering you, restoring you. And the way you process things is going to be so cho changed. You're not going to process things through the Holy Spirit. Not your yesterday, but your now. See, this is your now. This is your very now. And your self-imposed limitations will no longer stop you. They're broken now. It's happening right now. You're being set free right now. It's awesome. It's awesome. Mm. Thank you, Papa. As a father, I bless you, son. The night received that father's blessing. Receive your inheritance, son. You lack no good thing. And that Amakite curse is broken off of you. You say, what's an Amakite curse? Every time you try to get your victory or financial breakthrough, something steals it from you. But tonight that's broken. Nothing will steal from you any longer. You are free. You are free. You are free. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. No more bondage. No more curses. The blessing of the Lord is about to overtake you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. It's right now, church. It's happening right now. Hallelujah. But as many as received him, how many have received Jesus? See, we've got to receive Jesus a whole new way tonight. But as many as received him, Lord, we, we just receive you afresh tonight, Lord. Lord, we, we've lost the romance in our relationship. Lord, we kept you out of things in our lives. But tonight, Lord, tonight we receive you afresh. Tonight we're going to receive him afresh and receive him at the love of who he is. Not what religion has taught you, not what the latest book has taught you, or the latest message taught to you. Jesus, are you ready to receive me afresh? But as many as receive me, it's time to receive him a whole new way. It's time to have a whole new receptivity about the Messiah and who he is. And it's about to have an expectancy that 2013 will be a year of favor. Amen. A year of favor. It's a year of favor, church. It's your year of favor. As heirs and joint heirs, it's your year of favor. And it, it, you got to have a whole new receptivity about who he is in you and through you. It's time to receive him afresh tonight. And maybe even make a fresh commitment tonight. Because over years we've gotten weaned off. It's like a marriage of many years. We just became familiar. And then the romance was gone. Then we take one another for granted. And then we start abusing one another. But we forget about our first love. We forget about that romance. We forget about that date night. We forget about that excitement when we knew that we we're going to see our lover. Oh, we just get so excited about our lover. We got dudes are salvated. We're like, oh, I'm going to see my lover. See, we've lost that. When we come in the house of the Lord, that's not there anymore. 
But when I come in here, I'm going to go see my lover. It's my date night with Jesus. I'm preparing myself. I have receptivity. Whatever he wants to do, we're going to do it. And no more just restrictions. No more just taking him for granted. We've taken our faith for granted. We've taken our Lord for granted. But tonight I'm going to get rid of that. It's going to be different. The wind of change has come. The fact that the wind within the wind has been blowing around you. There's been a lot of change around you. But it's all good. Pops, I'm bringing the change. I'm bringing him into a new place. I'm going to sup with you. And there's questions that no man can answer. I will answer them for you. I love my little girl. Tonight's going to be a divine romance between you and Papa. And there's a new strength. You're going to rest tonight. Your mind gets busy. You concern yourself, Martha, with too many things. But tonight, Martha, we're going to meet afresh. We're going to meet the cross of Calvary, me and you. We're going to crucify those things that would try to stop you. We're going to crucify those words of man that wounded you. Tonight, there'll be no more betrayal, I promise you. Tonight, I am faithful and true to my beloved daughter, my faithful one. He's going to honor you. It's like tonight is a fresh fire, fresh anointing. You can feel it like the spring rain blowing all over you, washing away yesterday, washing away all your pain, washing away all your rejections. It's fresh. I came to heal that broken heart. I'm Jehovah the healer. You can dream again. It will not elude you. Tonight, my daughter, I love you. I'm proud of you. I see what you've been through, and my heart has been broken too. But now, my precious one, I'm going to honor you. Bring that peace. To bring that rest. And many has received him. Time to receive him fresh, church. Amen. It's time to receive him fresh. See, we got to we got to have a, a new expectation, whole new expectation. But as many received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Tonight there'll be no more orphan spirit in this house. It's time to stop operating out of an orphan spirit. Your response to what's gone on in the house of the Lord is because of an orphan spirit. But tonight it's broken. To many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children. Do you know as your children of God tonight? Do you know what that means to you? He's Papa. And as children of God, you no longer have to have a victim mentality or a victim spirit. You're heirs and joint heirs with him. You're more than conquerors in him and by him and through him. Nothing's impossible. You need to receive that tonight. Receive the gift of what God's given you. Too many tonight has received him. Tonight we're going to receive him afresh. Amen. Tonight's a fresh impartation. Tonight's something really fresh. And it starts tonight in this house. Even the way we do things is starting fresh. When we go to our job tomorrow, it's going to be fresh. I got a whole new perspective on life. I got a whole new insight to life. And I received him afresh. Tonight I'm putting back the romance in our relationship. And tonight I repent before God and ask his forgiveness. But I have treated him as something common. Where I, where I didn't romance him anymore. Where he was not on the throne of my life anymore. He just became something I did on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night. And, and we need to repent tonight and say, Lord, tonight let it be fresh. Our relationship tonight starts fresh. And put the romance.